uh, my name is Katarina Bonihadi. Ich, I'm the uh, moderation for today and um, I would like to say a warm welcome to, um, yeah, in the name of the whole UF team to Mark Kirschbaum and you're going to introduce yourself, Mark. If anybody has questions, you can type in the chat, uh, you can type in English or in German and we will try to answer your questions at the end of the session. So have fun and enjoy. So thank you so much um, for, for introducing me. I hope you can see my screen. This is the first and most important question. Uh, I get a yes, this is, uh, this is perfect. So a very warm welcome to everybody uh, being uh, with us today. Um, thank you for the introduction. My name is uh, Mark Kirschbaum. I'm an architect uh, teaching uh, architecture theory, uh, history and design here. Uh, at SRH University uh, in Heidelberg and I'm calling from Heidelberg right now uh, to all of you and uh, thank you for being uh, with us and uh, for your attention uh, for this uh, session. So I will talk today about the big five places and a bit of future learning. What, I'm, uh, what I will do during this session, I will, I will span a network uh, on the big five places that I will introduce uh, to you during this uh, session that I consider the most important places for us as human beings that we need uh, for our daily life so much. And this is uh, applicable to daily life as well as for uh, the, the uh, let's say, the, the present and also the future of learning uh, at the same time. I will not go that much into detail and I will uh, need to apologize for that because we don't have that much time, uh, but I have a lot of references for you and you're welcome to uh, check those at the end of, and they're also uh, on every uh, single slide. So what I will do, I will briefly talk about uh, space as a human, as a basic human need, then learning as a basic human need. So I will try, try to tie those two together, then I will highlight the big five places and uh, I will uh, give you some examples and I will end with some uh, final uh, statements. Space as a basic human need, what is this? We need to talk uh, a couple of slides on the phenomenon of uh, space. The 1960s really have been the time in which space has come to uh, pretty pretty big attention to the to the whole public. We see the Apollo 11 mission when mankind was entering the moon for the first time. And the 60s really have been this uh, really interesting time. You know this uh, state of Neil Armstrong, the small step for man, but the giant leap for mankind. And uh, also uh, being discussed in the Space Odyssey by uh, Stanley Kubrick. And at the same time, in a song by David Bowie, in space oddity. And this almost appeared uh, pretty much at the same time within uh, a time span of roughly just a year. So the interest uh, towards space has become uh, a cultural phenomenon, but not only in broad culture, but also in science, because the, the, the concept of uh, the personal space or the bubble concept that we can see here, the bubble that surrounds us, has been developed by Robert Sommer uh, in the late 60s. And I consider this a really important uh, concept to the perception of space, and this applies to all of us on a daily basis. And I'm also teaching this uh, to my students uh, here in Heidelberg, because this is one of the most important foundations uh, in architecture. This is the very first space, uh, even before we have been born, we are in a cocoon, in the mother's womb, uh, before our birth, so we see uh, the first surrounding by evolving uh, when our body is uh, evolving until the day of birth. So we can see already here space is something that is very, very uh, indicative to us as human beings. And a couple of years later, we see this is a hut in the forest that also my kids uh, and many generations of kids worked on. It is the urge for shelter. Uh, we can see this with kids pretty good and pretty clearly. So they are building huts and tents and all this stuff to really have this kind of issue of shelter that is important for us on the, for our daily life. 
when we go back to Henri Lefebvre, he says, social practice, globally speaking, presupposes the use of the body. And this is what I'm doing right now. I am using my body within this space, the seminar hall here uh, in, in Heidelberg. And you, all of you will do this on a daily basis. Uh, uh, whatever you do, uh, it is always your body in space. This seems so self-evident. Uh, it's maybe the same as with the forests and the trees, uh, but it's important in the perception uh, in the, the, the built environment that we share uh, from day to day. When we go back to learning, so we just roughly sneak into the phenomenon of learning. It's on the one hand space that is very, uh, very important to us as human beings, but also and obviously learning. When we look back to uh, 1865 to Wilhelm Busch, uh, the story of uh, Max and Morris, he says at the beginning, an old soul runs somewhat so, man, man must learn while here below. Also lautet der Beschluss, dass der Mensch was lernen muss. And we have to make clear, this has been the late 19th century and the teaching style was somehow ex cathedra. So the teacher is uh, teaching something to the students uh, and to the pupils. So, but also somehow saying that children need to be forced to learn. But I consider this is not true at all because learning is an evolutionary mode to all of us. Children want to learn, adults want to learn, because in order to survive, we need to learn. Uh, may it be in school or may it be uh, in university or may it be in work or wherever we are. Learning is uh, something that uh, shows us of being human. When we go ahead to today and look at the future skills uh, that have uh, been published uh, some years ago by the uh, Stifterverband, we see the in the, in the bottom left, the digital key competences are one of the most important um, uh, competences that we need today. So the digital key competences uh, are something that we need today. And this is what you and we here are doing uh, right now, because uh, otherwise we could not exchange. And if we look at the top 10 skills on the rise, uh, that has been have been uh, published by the World Economic Forum. Uh, recently, the technological literacy is one of the uh, one of the important skills, and I think you all know them uh, quite well. So, a um, couple of years ago, we uh, we uh, researched a lot on on learning with our students and international students, and we published a manifesto. You can uh, uh, access this via our. Uh, learning website if you're interested in and the first uh, uh, phrase is from traditional formal learning spaces to informal learning spaces learning is an all-encompassing activity though that, that goes far beyond formal educational institutions and needs to cover reality in its entirety learning happens actually everywhere and at all times so learning is an evolutionary mode and now i would like to enter with you the first of the big five places. And maybe you have uh, sneaked into uh, the, the introduction that uh, is on the, on the website uh, with which, or in which you can see what the five places are. But maybe you join us uh, on, a, on a very little tour and uh, I switched the place and I will now uh, enter uh, the first place. Uh, that you have, that I have, that we all have. And this first place is maybe the most important place uh, that, we, that we need to have because it guarantees us safety, it guarantees privacy, uh, it guarantees freedom of whatever we want to do. So the first place is home. Very easy. May it be a kind of visionary uh, a concept like uh, the one you see see here uh, of uh, Werner Panton, which is a couple of decades old, or may it be just uh, looking at uh, the, the furnishing magazines, the catalog of IKEA that is not being published anymore, it's only online. Uh, so it doesn't really matter if it's kind of high architecture or ordinary architecture or even architecture at all. The home is one of the most important places that we need to have and where we need to have 
stability. That is really, really important. I would like to switch um, places with you and from now on we go from our home zone into the work zone. And the work zone for a couple of centuries or decades really is, has been uh, the place uh, in which we spend a lot of time. So this is a painting by Adolf Menzel from the 19th century and I like it so much because it's showing uh, the working um, surrounding in uh, the early industrialization in this, uh, in this um, uh, rolling mill uh, that you can see uh, here and where people spent a lot of time of the 24 hours being in this kind of uh, uh, working surrounding. A lot later, maybe somehow, this is just an atmospheric uh, image, uh, maybe from today, a kind of a biophilic design in the background, a, bit, a kind of new work, office surrounding, maybe this way or any other way, that doesn't really matter. Uh, this is maybe uh, the, uh, the mode how we work uh, today. And this might also be the mode of uh, how we work today. I found this on the, inter on the internet and I like it so much. And, this is something that we know full well uh, today. So this is uh, an image uh, from a camper showing the computer, showing a cup of tea and just uh, the camper is on the shore and just uh, this is the surrounding of work. So we see the, the surrounding of work has changed a lot. And this is somehow also uh, the surrounding that covers not only work, but also learning because this is the work of our students at university and this is the surrounding uh, of learning. So I would like now to go into the third place and you might have heard of uh, the phenomenon of the third place. This is not a term that I have coined, it is a term that has been coined by the American sociologist Ray Oldenburg and I will, I will pick up uh, this uh, this uh, this term and develop it a bit further because I think this is really important and the third place is community and um, we are entering it starts to rain right now so this is life and this is good uh, real life uh, into this kind of mock-up community space and it uh, is also being used as a kind of community space this is the publication you might know uh, and it has been uh, published in the in the 80s in the, in the crisis of uh, urbanity in many of the American cities and uh, he focused uh, the uh, evolution of third places for people uh, where they can really meet. On the right, this is Ray Oldenburg uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a sketch saying those homes away from homes where unrelated people relate. So this is the importance uh, of the third places being far from home, being work. So this is uh, mainly uh, the spaces uh, in which uh, in encounters really take place uh, where democracy uh, really happens in, in the city or in public uh, places. It could be a place like this, uh, a cafe in Sweden. It could be, this is where I spend a lot of time during my studies. It's the Bauhaus Cafe in uh, Seattle, Washington. On the right you see an image of uh, Walter Gropius, the, the Bauhaus director, uh, the architect. Uh, and this is almost 20 years ago, so quite some time uh, ago. And from now, I would uh, come to the fourth place that I really like a lot, and this applies a lot to architecture. And this is where we are right now, somehow. We are in the environment, or in the built environment, however you would like to, to coin it. So, this is a kind of indoor setting that you see here. Uh, because this, this is important to the environment, uh, obviously, in closed spaces do belong, like universities, like homes and all this. And um, we spend about 90% of our total time, roughly, in indoor spaces. So I would say the remaining 10% are really, really important for us as human beings uh, to be in touch with nature, to be in touch with other people and just leave uh, the home or the space uh, in which you're in. This is an outdoor space. This is uh, a typical Italian uh, setting, the cathedral, the stairs, just a place where people meet, encounter and exchange. So the city is the stage, we are the actors, says sociologist uh, Irving 
Irving Goffman. It's just like a theater play, but it is really an important place. I would say, especially in the recent years, uh, the focus on the environment, may it be natural or may it be the built environment, uh, is, is so challenging and so important for us. And um, there is a lot of focus on in the recent years. And we also see this in the design of learning spaces. It, for about a decade or a bit more, this really has been from many universities or many schools uh, really focusing the importance of the space that we are in. And this is what we are doing uh, uh, to give you a brief example in our master's program designed for the built environment. Uh, this is the, a master's course uh, that we have here. We deal with the existing and improved places for people uh, to meet. And uh, there is one saying from the website, built environment forms the basis of our daily life. It connects people and is an important anchor of identity. In other words, being human is directly tied to the spatial environment, without which we cannot exist. Architecture, city landscape are our game board, like a stage for peaceful coexistence, for social interaction, and for the formation of society in general. So you see the high importance that belongs to that. So uh, it stopped raining, however, uh, we go back to uh, uh, we go indoors to the to the realm of the 90 percent and we go to the fifth place which works outside as it works uh, inside uh, obviously so we use this fifth place talk about now um, more or less all the time and I, I consider uh, it's it, it really a place and for me this is a topic of our time right now and I will give you a couple of examples uh, of that. The um, um, Italian researcher Luciano Floridi says informational and social interconnectedness will fundamentally change the way people relate to the world and this is about 10 years ago and I would say we can all agree that this is true and that we all use this place that we are also in right now. So this is uh, the first world, uh, web, world wide web server at CERN uh, in the late, uh, in the late uh, 80s. And uh, the document that you can see on the left, it's that one. And to me, maybe this is one of the most important documents in the whole 20th century, because this is the concept of Tim Berners-Lee um, working at CERN uh, to get an idea how uh, he can connect with other researchers and he invented the structure and the logic of the World Wide Web. And you, if you look at the very top, there is a bit of a handwriting that I will uh, enlarge a bit here. And his boss says on the, at the yellow arrow, he says, wake, but exciting. And I would say all the rest that comes after that, uh, we know full well and is a, an important piece of history. Again, this image, you can see this is the kind of fifth place we are in but it is also another place maybe it's the workplace so the second place maybe it's it's also environment so we inhibit a couple of places of the five places uh, pretty often uh, at the same time the question is how we can interconnect those this is a uh, a painting that I really like a lot uh, by Menata Tedesco, Smart Working. It's just a couple of years old. Uh, so this is uh, maybe one of the working modes that, uh, I don't know, you might all uh, well uh, quack it. So what I will do is I bring uh, uh, everything together. You have the overview of the places right now. Um, and in, in uh, our thinking and in our uh, research, uh, it, it seems important to um, bring together those places and especially research on the fourth and on the fifth place. So the interconnectedness between environment and the virtual environment, so the web or the virtual uh, world or reality. So this goes from either or being either at home or at work, that has been the case during industrialization. Uh, we are entering the third place in the 80s and 90s, and now we are somewhere else. We are at the fourth place and the fifth place without getting rid of the other places. They still play a an, an, an really important role. 
So, five in one, I give you some quick examples uh, of how this could uh, look like. Uh, five in one or learning here and there. What I will do, I'll show you some examples and you will see uh, the couple of places that may apply to this example on the bottom line. So the first one is a kindergarten in Tokyo. You can see on the top, in the top image, you can see a big, big tree in the circular building. And I would say this is somehow the second place for the kids. If you would say work is their occupation in the kindergarten, it is uh, at certain times even a third place and it definitely is a fourth place and a very, very strong fourth place, a very strong and very, uh, uh, very challenging uh, and motivational uh, surrounding for the kids that you can see here climbing those stairs and being in touch with nature. Another example where maybe all the places might apply is this, uh, is this uh, housing estate in Bangkok where you see a running track uh, in, in the building itself and some new work surroundings also have this kind of concept that looked like a bar, that looked like a sports stadium or, or whatsoever. So this definitely is the first place and maybe you can check, I can sum that up, uh, definitely also the other places. The High Line in New York, it's yeah for sure not, not home in the, in the strict sense, but it is for many people a working place, at least in summer or in, in spring or in autumn. Uh, it is a third place where, where people meet. You can see the image. It is a fourth place, uh, an existing high line, uh, a railway line that has been reshaped to an urban park. And it is a fifth place. You could also say, okay, any place today, because we all have our smartphone in, in our pocket uh, all the time, uh, we are always in a fifth place. And I would say this is only the beginning of the discovery of the fifth place. This is another example, the last example, um, uh, a work surrounding uh, the uh, headquarter building quite some, some years ago, about 10, 15 years ago. This kind of biophilic notion, having a stronger sense of nature in the working surrounding, that the place doesn't look like a working place, but it is a working place. So it is a second place. It forms a kind of fourth place and it is, uh, as I said, for sure, a kind of uh, a very strong fifth place. So I will come, and I hope I'm somehow in time, to the final statements, uh, and I will close uh, uh, with those in order to, uh, to somehow sum it up uh, what I consider important. So statement one, third and fourth places can significantly promote the human environment interaction. Humans are place related. This goes back to the beginning where I was talking about the body, the body being in space. Statement two, both places are our stage of daily life. That is not given. Give attention to it, treat it well, but do it. Three, by using fifth places, our notion of place will be subject to change. Let them enter our episodic memory because these places are not tangible like the fourth places that we have in the urban environment that we remember so well that we call our home, our hometown. We maybe call it a heimat or places that we really like a lot and then that we go back uh, from time to time and that are stored in our episodic memory because places are part of the episodic memory. I'm interested in how the fifth place uh, could uh, somehow uh, also fulfill this role. Statement four, by entering fifth places, fourth places become even more important, not less. To me, they are interdependent. We shall never forget, even though we are in a conference or in a meeting as we are right now, we, all of you, we are always in a physical environment. Always. We will and can never forget this. Maybe somehow it gets a bit in oblivion, but after a while you need to get up, you need to get to the toilet, you, you need some water, so you have your, your physical demands uh, that makes you feel okay i'm a physical human being and and i am embedded in space statement five 
According to Foucault, the 20th century has been the age of space, so the fourth place. So the 21st century is the age of broadly entering fifth places. Six, how do fifth places become places or a kind of? And the closing statement is, can fifth places motivate and improve our learning culture? And as we see from many digital tools that our students use, that my kids use in school, um, and these are only some uh, examples from learning culture, I would say, and my answer would be, I'm sure they can. A couple of re references for you to, to check or get in touch. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you. Dankeschön to all of you.